global warming everywhere up in the sky, coming in the fields that go up there, it's going up there, and we're going to global warming, global warming, and global warming this, global warming that. We're going to tax it, tax it, tax it. That's what we're going to do, tax it. You can understand me? Are you listening to me? We're going to tax it, we're going to tax it, we're going to tax all the animals, tax all the farms, all the farmers got to pay. Everybody's got to pay, everybody's got to pay. You understand what I'm talking about? Global warming theorists, here is your mother load. Researchers are now posing the theory that the reason the Earth was in such a warm age during the time of the dinosaurs is because of the massive amount of methane gas they produced. You want to let that sing in for a sec? Want to let it sink in? Yeah? The less scientific version reads something like this. Dinosaur farts caused massive global warming. Yeah, methane gas. Where did you get that picture? Where did you get that picture? Oh my gosh. Oh, sometimes we should leave things to the imagination. That is so terrible. That's worse than the smutty city one. Who knew? Jonathan, did you have any? You, okay, Jason, you do not get a Mike and Ike for those, those pictures. You're, you're banned from the Mike and Ikes, Jonathan. Good morning, Andy. Climate lockdowns. What was once dismissed as a conspiracy theory is now moving closer to reality. Environmental activists are claiming that we're facing a climate emergency and lockdowns are necessary to save the planet. Dale Hurd has the details. In early December, the Washington Post reported that because of climate change, snow in the Mountain West may vanish for years at a time. The headline did not age well. Only days later in the West, it started to snow. And snow. And snow. This incredible photo was taken at Donner Summit in California around Christmas. Lake Tahoe got 16 feet of snow in December, breaking a 50-year record. In early January, some Virginia motorists were stuck on I-95 for more than 24 hours after snow and ice made the road impassable. Add this headline to a long string of failed climate change predictions. This headline from the London Independent predicting no more snowfalls is more than 20 years old. Climate experts now seem to have hedged their bets saying global warming will both increase and decrease snowfall. Weather Bell meteorologist Joe Bastardi says more snow or less snow, it's called a normal winter. The weather is always going back and forth. This is way, way within the realm of what you can expect in the kind of winter we have here. But climate activists continue to insist that we face a worldwide climate emergency. And there's been more talk of the need for what are called climate lockdowns. Over the holidays, environmentalists staged what they called Occupy Biden, an eight-day protest outside Joe Biden's Delaware home demanding that he take action on the climate. We're calling upon President Biden to issue an executive order declaring a climate emergency. He's already said it's a code red emergency. Dozens of nations have already declared a climate emergency, including the entire European Union. And now, after accusing climate skeptics of inventing a conspiracy theory about climate lockdowns, there has been increasing talk of instituting climate lockdowns, modeled after COVID lockdowns and under a system called environmental authoritarianism, in which your right to drive a car or fly in a plane or own a big house could be suspended by the government in order to fight climate change. A video from 2016 put out by the World Economic Forum has gone viral again amid the new economic crisis. 
At the time, the forum proposed that people should rent everything, like tools and other items from machine libraries that operate much like book libraries. Now even Bloomberg arguing that America should become a nation of renters. They say the very features that made houses an affordable and stable investment, those are coming to an end. Many asking, what about the American dream? Play that video. This was put, put out by the World Economic Forum. You may not be... Uh, you may not have seen it, but this is the eight predictions from them for the world in 2030. Uh, you'll own nothing, you'll be happy. Whatever you want, you'll rent, and it'll be delivered by drone. The U.S. will not be the world's leading superpower. A handful of countries will dominate. Reading from the screen, it even goes on to say, maybe this is most important, that Western ideas will be tested to the breaking point. Is, is there bias here at all by these predictions? Is there an agenda here? Is there some accuracy? Americans to have to do with less. We're going to drive less, fly less, eat less meat. A large part of the carbon we have in the atmosphere now is caused by the electricity grid, which is about 25% or so. Exactly. So 24% um, it comes from agriculture and forestry. Why is that causing such a big increase in carbon? Cows and other grass-eating species uh, have a digestion system that emits methane. And methane is a very powerful greenhouse gas. So we need to change cows. Uh, Cows, just cows alone. Just cows alone. Just cows alone. Uh, How are we going to do that? Well, uh, actually, of all the categories, uh, the one that has gone better than I would have expected five years ago is this work to make what's called artificial meat. When cows fart and burp and splatter, well, it ain't no laughing matter. They're releasing methane every time they do. And that methane from the rear goes up to the atmosphere and pollutes our planet, warming me and you. Yes, that methane that the past is a greenhouse gas that'll trap the sun's heat and change our climate too. Gee, is it hot in here, or is it just me? So to change their emissions, Burger King went on a mission, testing diets that would help reduce their farts. That's a start. And my now there ain't no question that it's helping cows digestion, adding plant and grass so they can play their part. Cow ain't farting. Must be me. Reducing methane, methane. And the formula is free and open source. So join it. Reducing methane, methane. Got the cow kids singing for a better world. Got the cow kids singing for a better world. talking about sustainable housing. Mr. McMillan, would you like 30 seconds more? Allow me to introduce myself. I represent the rent that's too damn high party. People are working eight hours a day and 40 hours a week to some a third job. Women can't afford to take care of their children, feed their children breakfast, lunch, and dinner. My main job is to provide a roof over your head, food on the table, and money in your pocket. This is politics as usual. Playing a silly game, it's not going to happen. The rent too damn high movement, the people I'm here to represent can't afford to pay their rent. They're being laid off right now as I speak. They can't eat breakfast, lunch, or dinner. Listen, someone's stomach, chill, child's stomach just growled. Did you hear it? You gotta listen like me. Okay, Let's Mr. talk McMillan. about the issue. Mr. People can't Mr. afford Mr. to Cuomo, pay their rent. 30 seconds for you, sir. Rent is too damn high.
Thank you. Shutting down the suburbs. This is the progressive vision of how you make people do with less in a climate emergency. A recent article in the influential magazine Foreign Policy suggested democracy may not be compatible with reaching climate goals. This, even though actual weather statistics do not show there is a serious problem with the climate. Theoretical physicist Dr. Steve Koonin, former Undersecretary of Energy during the Obama administration, says the weather record shows there is no climate emergency. Heat waves in the U.S. are now no more common than they were in 1900. No global trends in drought or in floods. Greenland's ice sheet isn't melting any more rapidly now than it was 80 years ago that there's no long-term trend in hurricanes over the last 100 years. But climate activists are advancing their agenda anyway, and new government regulations continue to punish and defund more reliable and less expensive fossil fuel sources in favor of less reliable and more expensive renewable energy. President Biden, he should have the federal agencies oppose any new fossil fuel infrastructure. So basically, this political movement has declared war on uh, on fossil fuels. And a lot of people have concluded in the industry and also people who just are investors that this sector has no future. Rising energy prices this winter could be only the beginning. A recent study in the journal Nature found that meeting reduced carbon emission targets will cost more than $2 trillion annually. That's more than $5,000 per American per year with cost by the end of this century totaling one quadrillion dollars. Dale Hurd, CBN News. Well, you, you look at all of these debates about climate change and, you know, the old adage, you know, if you don't like the weather, wait, it's going to change. Uh, if, if you're looking at shifting weather patterns, that frankly is nothing new to the planet. Uh, the Sahara Desert used to be a thriving garden. Uh, we, right here in America, we, we have people old enough to remember the Dust Bowl days uh, of the, the Midwest and how that drove people to California because you couldn't grow crops anymore in what is now the breadbasket of the world. So will climate change? The answer is yes. The, the bigger issue is what, what was a real popular theory back 15 years ago, peak oil that we are going to run out of a finite resource. We're going to run out of oil. And that uh, should, should have led us into investing more into renewable energy sources, which over the long haul will be cheaper if we throw the investment that's needed to develop it. So that's my answer to all of this. It's not a lockdown. How do we develop renewable energy? Uh, there have been various proposals coming out of Washington that are focused on that. But how do we get to a place where solar and wind and tidal forces, geothermal, all of those things take their place in trying to reduce our overall demand on oil? And if peak oil is true, that it's a finite resource, there's only a certain amount of oil under the ground, well, then the faster we develop alternative energy, the better we'll all be. The day's most interesting headlines, a woman in Canada has been diagnosed with climate change. You heard that right, diagnosed with climate change. She had a problem. She went to an emergency room. A doctor attended to her and then wrote climate change on the diagnosis slip. The planet has a fever. If your baby has a fever, you go to the doctor. You, you take action. The planet has a fever. And five now, the planet has a fever. Now, the planet has a fever. Now, the planet has a fever. a fever. If your baby has a fever, you go to the doctor. You, you take action. The planet has a fever. And by now, the planet has a fever. Hello, warming theorists. Here is your mother love. Researchers are now posing the theory 
that the reason the Earth was in such a warm age during the time of the dinosaurs is because of the massive amount of methane gas they produced. You want to let that sing in for a sec? Want to let it sink in? Yeah? The less scientific version reads something like this. Dinosaur marks caused massive global warming. Yeah, methane gas. That's a start. You do not get a mic in ours for those, those pictures. You're, you're banned from the mic in ours. Jonathan? Good morning, Andy. If my cow ain't farting, must be me. Ha, 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 ha.